here, scholar, here, go. Back of the week, now, phone, shall it come to work, boy, and ask him, this is so for it, ask you, ask for it. Hey, for now, we're here, though, bye, bye, bro, here, here, now. Hey everyone, Astronaut98 here. Today we are talking about Season 3 for All Mankind, Episodes 1 and 2. So, at the beginning of Episode 1, we get shown the Red Spread, as I like to call it. The socialist expansion of socialist countries. One of those being now Mexico. The Reds are getting everywhere. Run for your lives! The Red Scare is here! After the whole uh, Apollo Soyuz thing, Reagan's approval soared to 72%, which is ridiculously high for any president that I know of. The Rogers Commission happens, but it is not for Challenger. It is to look into what exactly happened when the nuclear reactor melted down. Likely some things were redacted, as political support is very important in this universe. So, Jamestown has begun expanding at a an alarming rate, a really awesome rate, if you ask me. Eventually, Reagan signs a settlement with Premier Andropov to split the moon right down the middle, so that way we don't have to fight over resources. But nuclear fusion comes along, involving Helium-3, created by David Ayesa and Richard Hilliard. Now, Dev Ayesa is going to be very important in this next season. I mean, like the whole next season, as far as I can tell. From what I can tell, he could either be the hero of the season or the villain. Helium-3 is an element that is not very common on Earth, but is very common, theoretically, on the lunar surface. For instance, they actually found it in the Pro Mankind universe, which means there's some there. Helios and NASA are going to be working together to mine Helium-3 for use in fusion. The Russians are also looking into fusion using uh, Kurigan Enterprises. However, I don't think they'll be getting there anytime soon, because it's Russia, and they're stealing our technology. Now, due to the space race, there's going to be a massive proliferation of space companies and countries. For instance, Polaris Space Tours, founded by Karen Baldwin and Sam Cleveland. Now, we all know at the end of Season 2 that Sam and Karen became business partners with The Outpost. But they decided to go work again and make little space shuttles to send people to orbit. And then they made this giant space hotel. Then something else happened. The Pathfinder tragedy. So the Pathfinder orbiter carried a few of the uh, moon marines, I guess. This guy here served at Jamestown. Uh, then there was a pressurization accident where the cabin lost pressure, as far as I understand. And basically, he died. So they launched the... Uh, James Webb Space Telescope look-alike, which is actually called the Thomas Paine Space Telescope. And then there is the Gateway Space Station. Literally, that is what they call it in their mission thing. And you see the uh, new logo for the Jamestown base. Very chic, if you ask me. And again, this Thomas Paine Space Telescope was launched by Pathfinder. I think it's rather weird that Pathfinder seems to be only Pathfinder-class spacecraft of flying. Who knows? Maybe it's just really hard to build new things. And Iraq invades Kuwait. Now, President Hart decided not to help in this situation. I know, that's a little weird, but remember, we have fusion. No more need for fossil fuels and less for global warming. So, start of the episode, we get a beautiful approach to the station and that beautiful shot recreating 2001 Space Odyssey. An homage to Stanley Kubrick, who made the first space movies. Very fitting. Now, why are they on this station? There's a wedding, as evidenced by this cake with really awesome cake toppers. I love the little bubble helmets. It's just so 1960s. Granted, that's when this show started, so makes sense. Here you can see that Ed Baldwin is not aging very gracefully. He's probably taking morphine or something for osteoporosis. Here you see uh, uh, Danny Stevens and his wife Amber getting married. Now, there was a launch earlier in the episode by North Korea that claims to have given up on its nuclear program. It exploded. Debris from that rocket hit one of the thrusters on the station, and something went wrong, causing the thruster to continuously fire, resulting in the acceleration to go up. And this station has a really weird thruster setup. I mean, if you fire two count opposite facing thrusters, you end up with a translation vector. It's just weird. And as the graph goes up, cake literally getting squashed. Cakes aren't exactly designed for higher than 1G environments, as evidenced by them being baked in a 1G environment happens. Jimmy Stevens basically goes on a rant on how his parents are just dead and there's nothing he can do about it. So Karen, Sam, and the commander of the station talk about putting all the uh, passengers on the shuttles to take them back because the thrusters firing. They decide against it. Bad choice. Risking all their guest lives for money. They send out a crew to go repair it. The cable snap 
knocks them into space, they die from suffocation. Meanwhile, on the ground, Margot is busy chatting away with her Russian cohort, while things go much, much worse up in the heavens. Now, I don't know how there are sparks in space, there's no oxygen, but I could be wrong. Maybe steel on steel grinding in space produces sparks. So, window gets smashed, Ed Baldwin gets his leg broke by his new wife crushing him. Yes, higher G means 90 pound woman equals 200 pound woman. Danny Stevens goes on EVA after climbing up a 200 foot ladder and lifts that heavy, heavy, heavy ratchet and tightens up the valve. And then he gets whacked off the space station, held only on by his tether, dangling upside down. Having done all that, the episode ends. We get a, basically, a fun chance to catch up with everybody and learn that the Russians are still scuzzballs, Margot's still naive, and that Daniel Poole got remarried, along with uh, the Baldwins divorcing. Now, if you are enjoying this video, please like, subscribe, and do hit that bell notification if you want to see more stuff like this. Now, because it is Pride Week, I decided I'd reveal what I am to you. I'm heterosexual and American. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been The Astronaut. And don't tune out, there's more to come. If you are enjoying this video, do hit that bell notification. It's very helpful. God bless America. Now, Episode 2 starts with Karen Baldwin driving out to the middle of the desert. I mean, that's not spooky at all. But it turns out it's to meet with the guys who developed Fusion, Helios, who is currently designing a new methane engine, which is very, very SpaceX, if you ask me. Helios decides to buy Polaris Station to turn it into an interplanetary crew vehicle, and Karen is busy cleaning out her office. Danny stops by to grab his mom's astronaut pin from Sam's office. They get into a minor altercation. Nothing really important, just human shenanigans. So here you see uh, Molly Cobb, first American woman on the moon, uh, has gotten a bit older and a little bit blinder. So, she decides to go against Margot after Margot says astronaut selection process is now done by a committee and selects Ed Baldwin for the Mars mission over Daniel Poole. Now, I think that is a wise choice because Ed is a test pilot, Daniel Poole was a computer. Granted, she also now has degrees in robotics, astronautics, and uh, I think engineering, which is very cool degrees to have. But that's more of a science-oriented thing, and you need someone who can make split-second decisions. Test pilots have to do that all the time. Personally, I see that as a very wise choice. So, Ed gets all excited. He tells Kelly, who's at the South Pole at McMurdo Station, to come with him. She's a little hesitant at first, but she says yes. She's going to bring some bacteria along with her that she was studying at the South Pole. So, in the conference room, Ed and Danielle are having this little bit of rivalry where they egg each other on to fail. Margo comes back and gets informed by the coolest engineer ever, Bill Strausser, that Ed was selected as astronaut. Uh, Margo fires Cobb and then tells Ed he's off the mission. She then talks to Aleda, who is working on the new mission's engines, the Nerva engines, and sends her to the moon to go repair it there, because too much gets lost in translation, especially when you write things down on paper, and engineers have more than one way of saying things. Now, she's working on an NTR, nuclear thermal rocket, which basically means you shove a liquid into a nuclear reactor, and it comes out the nozzle at high temperatures. Really fun stuff, but you can see here, this rover has literally been on the moon since the 1970s, and it still works. That's what you call good engineering. Ed and Cobb are depressed, so they drink their sorrows away. Ed and Danielle meet up in the outpost, which has basically become a tourist attraction, and Ed says some sexist things to Danielle Poole. Now, Jamestown has expanded quite a bit, looks great. I am going to try and make a replica of it in Kerbal. Hopefully it does not melt my laptop CPU. Aleda decides to call her family, who seems a little underwhelmed that she's actually on the lunar surface. Ed, being drunk, takes his little electric roadster that he rented for a drive and crashes into uh, Karen's house. So Karen brings him inside, gives him a coffee, tries to get him to calm down, and then gets an idea to have Helios hire him as the new commander for their Mars mission. Personally, this is what was a brilliant move on Karen's part. I love it. Whoever's writing this is a genius. So you get to see a beautiful, like, hand-painted picture of what the uh, Phoenix is going to look like. 
And here's a much better picture from the beginning of the next episode. Here are all the missions that are going to be done in the show. I love how many of these I actually recognize, which is great. There's a Sea Dragon 2, which sounds like an awesome vehicle. But there's also the Mars Exploration Rovers, Spirit and Opportunity. And then you got all sorts of orbiters flying. There are also a bunch of other hidden references. The Nerva Chamber Pressure, matching historical data. Gary Hart running for present and succeeding. Nuclear Solution to Global Warming, Korea giving up on nuke. Slim Fast, 2001 Space Odyssey. The Space Shuttles, going to the station shaped like the Hermes spacecraft. Margo using sticky notes. Apple and Sony product placement. If you're enjoying this video, please like, subscribe, and share the thoughts in the comments below. I release a new video every other week for your viewing pleasure. I am the astronaut. Let's fly.